like to draw your attention to a particular text in the Bible. I am not a great preacher. I'm, I, I don't know. I, I just like to share with people my experience with God during the week. Is that okay? Yeah. So if you, at the end of the service, you, I know you guys are used to great preachers. I have watched you guys on YouTube, you know. Yes, sir. I, I, I've watched, I, your area of celebration and I said, Jews and all of them. Yes, sir. May, may be watching you. But I know you used to some good preaching. I cannot really get you there where you finish here and everybody just leaving, going out, you know, feeling, you know, you're about to have a fight, fist fight with the devil. I'm not sure, but I'd like to at least attempt this morning to provide you with a few tools that you can use in your Christian experience. Is that okay? Just a couple of tools that you can use. When you get to work, you'll probably be able to use. Or, or when you deal with your domestic issues, you probably can pull and say, I remember Mary said this, and perhaps I can use it. Is that all right? So Genesis chapter 50, are you with me? Yeah, man. Genesis chapter 50. Turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 50. I'm going to read in your hearing from the New International Version, beginning with verse 15. If you don't have the New International Version, just close your eyes and just bypass the Haitian accent and just listen to what is left of it and see if you can make sense of what I'm, I'm reading in your hearing. Is that all right? So, Father, please speak to us. For we need a word from you. We don't know about tonight. We don't know about tomorrow. All we know is that we have this moment. Bless us with your presence so that this moment will change everything about tomorrow. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 50, beginning with verse 15. You with me? And I began. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, quote, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pay us back for all the wrongs we did to him. Verse 16. So they, the brothers, sent word to Joseph saying, your father, quote, left these instructions before he died. And the instructions they put together began in verse 17. This is what you are to say to Joseph. They say, the father said, I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Their words now, not the father's word, their word, for treating you so badly, he admitted. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your fathers. When their message, when their message, the brother's message, when their message came to him, Joseph wept. Joseph Wept. Verse 18, his brothers then came to came and threw themselves down before him, saying, We are your slaves. But Joseph, but Joseph, but Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Now, if you're not using it, even if you're using an electronic Bible. Please underline these words. Am I in the place of God? It's very important that you underline it. Because when you go home and we read the text and you try, continue to try to make sense of the message for today, you will need to know this because the title of my sermon is It's Not Always About You. You need to make connection between the title and the text. And you will find the key there. In these words, am I in the place of God? With this, I want you to see the sermon. This is the key text. I have a few supporting texts I'm going to share with you that you do need to know. Of course, you're going to take notes and, and take those texts into consideration because I do try to make sense to a few things that I'm going to share with you. You're going to need those texts. To connect them together to see if it makes sense to you. The first one is Romans chapter 12, verse 1.
verses 18, 19, and 20. Romans chapter 12. I'm giving you three supporting texts. One key text. What is the book again? Genesis. And the, the chapter is what? 50. The verses are 15 to 21. That's the key text. The supporting texts are, number one, Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 18. I read in your hearing. If it is possible, listen to me. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Woo! Step back. Take note. If it is possible. Do you see how the text begins? Of course you all know the text. I'm not sharing with you anything you don't know. Romans 12, 18 to 20. If it is possible, comma, as far as it depends on you, as far as it depends on you, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone, even in the, well, especially in the church. Mm -hmm. Especially in the church. Ver ver verse 19, important, verse 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Listen, do not take revenge. Leave room, leave room, leave room. Leave room. Do not take revenge. Leave room, leave room for God's wrath. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. When I was putting the sermon together, I was tempted to go and do my little research to do a comparison between those two words, revenge and avenge. But I said, well, listen, these are a bunch of professional, intelligent people, PhD, doctors, lawyers, teachers. Okay, I don't need to do that. Y'all can do that on your own. But what I want you to notice, the text says that do not take revenge. And God says that God will avenge. There's a vast difference between revenge and avenge. And God wants us in relationship with one another. We understand that it is not ours to revenge. It is God to avenge. And when you get home, please, just try to see the difference between the two so the text can come alive and grab a hold of you and change you. Verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will build, burn, be hip, burning cold over his head. The second text I want you to take note of is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. I'm going to go far fast because I don't want to miss my time. Do not seek revenge. Woo! Speaking to Mount Vernon, speaking to Seventh-day Adventists, God said, do not seek revenge or bear grudges against any of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Whenever you see God make a declaration or statement, and then he say, I am. He's establishing his authority over your life. And I'm going to drop something right here. The moment you choose God as your personal savior, you giving up the, you have given up the right to manage your life. Now that one you need to say amen. micromanage our life. Samuel 26. I've not even start preaching yet and I'm getting excited. Let me take it easy. First Samuel chapter 26 verse 1. This is the third supporting text to the really real text for the element. It's the real text Genesis 50, 15 to 20 right? And then the last of the supporting text. First Samuel 26 11. But the Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hands against the Lord's anointed. 
Instead, take the spear in a water jar by his head and let us go. Now you remember this statement and you remember who made that statement, David. The understanding in stuff. Listen, if most of us will have our ways, when we get to heaven, we will take God to court for asking us to do things that he knows full well we cannot do. Whew. I want to stop for a moment and take a little breather over this one. Are y'all listening to me? Most of us, if we were to have our way, when we get to heaven, we are going to take God to court for asking us to do things that he knows full well we cannot do. I'm going to name a few of them. For instance, in relationship when God asks us to love the other person as he loves us. Every one of us agrees that when it comes to the way God loves people, whoo, this is difficult to understand. How could God love me after all that I have done? How could God continue to love me? So much so, some of us try not even to try to process it. We just leave it alone. We just say, God love me, and then that's it. We just leave it alone. It's too much for us to understand. But to understand that God say, love as I love you. And God's love is divine. And ours is sinful. How can he expect us to love as he loves? But yet, 1 John 4 verse 11, God say, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself and as I love you. The second thing in which I think some of us will want to take God to court over is that God tells us the just, the Seventh-day Adventist must live, must live by faith. Now, a lot of us think we have faith until our faith is tested. Then we realize that we don't have faith. And then to give ourselves, cut ourselves a break, or, or we always often say that, well, everybody does it. Or nobody can do this. Well, if nobody can do it, why in the world is God asking you to do it? But God wants us to live by faith. The third thing in which I think, and I would like to ex ex uh, spend the rest of the sermon on, is God's request for us to forgive one another. It was, really, it was... Uh, a Sunday afternoon when, when they moved me from Cornerstone to Coney Island my family said to me uh, dad we, we're not con going to continue to hop with you from church to church to church to church we would like to make relationship with people long term relationship my family decided since we lived upstate New York they decided that from now on we're going to go to church our church and you can go to your church wherever you are I said, good enough. When then they moved me from Coney Island to Mount Zion, naturally the day of the installation, they were all there and then they didn't see them anymore. But we leave, we moved to Hamden, Connecticut. So my children, every Friday after school, they look forward to leave my house. My eldest son was then 17. They decided that they will travel to uh, Hyde Park and there they will spend their Sabbath at the Mid-Hudson Seventh-day Adventist Church and then on Sunday they will come home. My son on Sunday afternoon was in his way. They called me to say that they were on their way back home and then I got a call. Daddy, the police just stopped me and I said, Nathaniel, leave the phone on. When the police gets, put your hands on the dashboard and when the police gets to you, call him sir, show him respect, and do everything he said. My two other boys were in the back seat. And of course, Nathaniel is, was so scared. Any of you, Nathaniel, you, you know my, my, my son, Nathaniel. Na Nathaniel is a six foot two. He was then six foot one. Dark skinned, black boy, well built. Now, let me take a little commercial, just in case any of you wonder what happened to me. Mind your business. Anyway, just to make sure that I clear that in case you're looking at me and me telling my son six, so then he's looking at me. Mind your business. 
Let's stay with the sermon. Now, my son was shaking, obviously. And you can say, because most of you here are black, and you probably even now know what it feels to be the father of big black young men. I am on the phone. I cannot think of anything else because there's still a percentage, whether it is 10% or 2%, there's still a percentage point that my son's life might end today. That's the reality I live with. It is not fake. It is not something that is because I'm insecure. There's enough evidence to tell me that even now, my three boys can be gunned down for the people from the same people that I pay to protect us. Simply because someone works some things in their mind to tell them that I'm always, oh, my children, especially when we're young, we always a threat to their lives. Before I know it, I heard the conversation between the policeman and my son. And then my Ethan came on the phone and said, Dad, the police took Nathaniel away. What do we do? Now, I have been living in this country for most of my life. I have never had anyone put handcuff in my hands. Yet my 17-year-old son was arrested for passing another car from the right side of the traffic. When he told me that, now you can imagine as a dad how I feel. Called my first elder, have no family in, 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 in Connecticut, and, and then I, 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 I rushed there to see the city of my son on the phone, going frankly crazy, and I went there, and I asked to see the police officer who arrested my son. He wouldn't come out. I addressed the person on the desk, and she had an attitude. By then, I really didn't care whether or not they know my profession, or whether or not they care enough whether they kill me or not. I really let her know what I always want to say and could never say because of the robe that I wear on Sabbath. Yeah, you go ahead and look at me as if, uh-huh. Listen, you, you be as holy as you want to be. But when it comes sometimes to something that God put in you concerning your child, your children may not die for you. But I know very few fathers will not die for their children. And I really wanted them to arrest me. I wanted someone to know that, listen, really? So I went there, my first son was just pulling me, and I really took my child and went home. The date was September 6, 2019. Dallas police officer Ember Geiger, after coming off her shift, claimed she was so exhausted she didn't realize that she was entering apartment 1478, although she lives in apart an apartment 1378. We don't really know how she gained entrance into the apartments since her story changed three times. First, the door was locked. Second, the door was unlocked. And third, the door was ajar. We really don't know how she got in, but we do know what happens, what happened once she was in. When she entered apartment 1478, Although she lives in apartment 1378, she encountered Botham Shame Jean, or some of you, Jean. Jean. Botham Shame Jean, a black man, innocent, 
please, innocent. No criminal record. Leader of the praise and worship team at his church. She accounted him in apartment 1478. Although she lives in apartment 1378, he was sitting on his box of short, unharmed, in his apartment. Amber Geiger said that she opened the door in apartment 1478. She lived in apartment 1378. She noticed Botham sitting on his boxer, boxer short, table eating, unarmed, innocent black man. She pulled her firearm, shot and killed an unarmed. Black man sitting in his boxer in his apartment. She says she did so because she felt threatened for her life. The outrage over his killing was swift and immediate, especially in the black community. St. Lucian's picked it up. But because we have seen this too many times before, pause. Commercial. Now, I want you to know this is commercial time now. Many of you who are growing up right now, really not into the school thing, we want you to know, at least the ACS director from your conference would like you to know, the community needs you. Perhaps some of you need to start considering, not just when you, if you're going to law schools, not just to be, to, 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 to be defense attorney, to defense here and there. But we need some folks also to be prosecutors in a sense that you need to be in a district attorney. Because one of the most powerful positions in this country is that of a district attorney. <laughs> now one thing, Pastor Lega and I, we were talking, one of the things, as soon as I get back from the Bahamas, me going to send a letter to every one of them, try to have an appointment with them, you know. Because if I become friends or at least know in a first name basis the, the prosecutor for this Westchester, he knows who I am, he has my card. When you are in trouble and you call the conference, I can call him and say, this is Mario, remember? No. Yeah, man, you remember? Yeah, man, me. You with me? We need you to run for these offices because they choose. I watch when the this is still commercial now. Don't don't stop the clock. This is commercial. Uh, when when you watch the movie uh, in Netflix and and I don't want to advertise to another. But when you are and, and, and those innocent five and and then you all outrage all this because. The district attorney made a decision. It was not the police. And most of you need to understand also, when you are running the protest against the police, really it's not the police. It's the justice system. It's the justice system you have to fight. It's your elected officer. Those who you elect into office. You can be as big as you want. You can have as much beautiful praise team and proud of being members of Mount Vernon. But once you live here, you just another... You just another year. You know what I mean. But the justice system seems to be, they show us the woman is blinded, but... It seems like she always managed to lift this thing and see which color is coming before. You're with me? No, I'm preaching the word now. Now, we run the clock. I want you to see something on the video that is about to be shown there. Pay attention. I have a reason for asking you to pay attention. I want you to learn something. Something in connection not only to the text, key text, but the supporting text that I read. I'll just make the connection and then I will take my seat and sit down. Is that okay? Roll the tape, please. I 
I don't want to Here's why I want you to watch his body language Watch his eyes Don't watch this now the same way you did when you watch it on your phone or pad or whichever before. I want you to watch something, the lesson, so that you can leave here with a few tools that you can use. Please watch. I don't want to say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us. I think you know that. But I just I hope you go to God psychoanalysis little stuff and you're watching people's behavior and stuff like that you notice he's struggling you see how he's breathing right now whenever you're looking at someone you listen pay attention and when he's about to say what he's been struggling with watch the way he moved to sit at the tip of the chair right we have a reason why we behave that way if he was asleep, he would be snoring by now. Because he's very much into what's about to be born from within him. Are you with me? Because right now, this boy is giving birth. Watch. I don't want to... say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us I think you know that but I just I hope you go to God with all what, all the guilt, all the thing, the bad things you may have done in the past, each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do. If you truly are sorry, I know, I can speak for myself, I, I forgive you, and I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I, see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's, what, that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I 
I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. When the police officer arrested my son for passing another car from the right side of the traffic, I was so enraged, I wanted to kill him. Well, you, you are good Adventists, you, you think. I'm speaking for me. Girl, I wanted him dead. And if possible, I wanted me to do God the favor and do it myself. I watched the pain in my son's face, the embarrassment and humiliation. Now, for those of us who watch this video over and over again, and even for those of us who've seen it the first time, you probably will fall between one of the two. When you watch this in social media, and you see the reaction for most people think that something deranged in this boy's head. But I would like for you, like me, look at it. See a teenager teaching us something. I started the sermon by saying to you, if most of us will have our way, when we get to heaven, we will take God to court for asking us to do a series of things that he knows full well we cannot do. Faith, love, forgiveness. If you invite me back, I will promise I will talk to you about faith and forgiveness. I'm struggling with it. But now I have faith in love. But now I want to talk to you about this forgiveness thing. For because this is new, this is really happening in my life. Learning forgiveness. One, please write it down. Be careful when you are right. When you think you're right, you are the most dangerous person there is. You are the most dangerous person when you think you're right. Because especially if you're Seventh-day Adventist, when you think you're right and God is on your side, you can do anything to anyone feeling justified because you are right and the person is in the wrong. I'm talking about giving you tools to take home with. Number one, be careful when you are right. This relationship God has with us or would like to have with us is something that Adventists have struggled with so much so. Myself, I have decided that now I am too old to play, play this game I see most Adventists of schizophrenic people behaving like. I think most Adventists are schizophrenic, you know, and they were always pretending what they're not. Sorry guys, I don't mean to be disrespectful to you. <laughs> but really, pretending to be what we're not. DSM-4, I have not graduated to DSM-5 yet, but pretending to be who we're not. This thing is really teaching me that I am not there yet and I can still see Christ saying, Mario, come. Let me show you. And the word said to me, if you cannot forgive, you will have no place with me in heaven. That nice lady who's been coming to church forever, that the husband left when she was young and she raised those children struggling for years while he's over there having good time with his young wife and leaving her alone there. She grew up and be good deaconess, good ushers, good this Sabbath school teacher, Sabbath school and everything. And she has that husband sitting right in the top of her heart, waiting for God's judgment. And if you ask her, have you forgiven him? Oh, I forgive him. I even pray for him. 
I'm waiting for God's justice. And when an Adventist tell you they're praying for you, be careful, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. When an Adventist tell you that I am praying for you, they're just waiting and wondering what's taking God so long. I'm praying for you. You know how it is, the thing that we love to say. We love it because most of us as good Adventists, we love being servants of God. But forgetting that, you know, when you first joined the church, God called you to be servant. It's all right to be servant. But for goodness sake, you need to graduate and become followers of Christ. <laughs> I am, oh, look at what time it is. Hey guys, I need to end. But listen, I'm not going to end because I have some more that I need to share. Here it is. This thing that we call Adventist is much more than just being servants. Being a servant, you know what you're supposed to do. You return your tithes, you do some function in the church, and you don't eat pork, and then you behave right. It, well, you only do a little fornication here and there, but you don't really live with the person. <laughs> well, y'all are y'all looking at me as if you think that I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you do your little something here and there, but you still behave, you do right. And then if God don't take you to heaven, it's because God is ungrateful. Because you're such a nice person. And all this stuff, you serve it, you serve God. Servants do, you know, what they're supposed to do. But God wants you to follow him. Yeah. Let's follow me. Yeah. Because oftentimes, when you're following someone, oftentimes you gotta be careful. Because as you follow a person, they often change lanes without even put on their letter. So you don't know where they're to. You gotta be careful. And you do not follow someone during the daytime the same way you do at night. When the difficulties come close and you are following, you need to remember if it's at night, stay close. Your vision is impaired. You need to have attention. You do not follow. The person the same way when he's sunny and bright, the same way when he's snowy. And you can you track it. Jesus wants you to understand that if you want to have a relationship with God, you need to graduate from being servants to followers. Yeah. Who don't know where Christ is taking you. You simply follow. You may not, you may have a GPS, but you're still part of the convoy following after. Amen. And you don't know when he's making his move because he's leading. You never go ahead of the person leading you to where they're going. You step behind. Most of us don't want to be the last one in the thing. We want to be right behind the, the earth. You want to be behind the person there. You want to do right. If you notice as you watch the video, you can tell he struggled with this. And even when the tie is not too tight, he probably has a 15 and a half, but it felt like it's a, it's, it's a 13 and a half. He kept pulling it as if it's choking him. And watch carefully. When you about to give birth to forgiveness, what you see involved there are three characters. It's you, the person who wronged you, and God. It's never other people. When you go on Facebook and, and then you watch the comments there, they always say that slavery and, and white people and brown people and, and Indians, oh, please, has nothing to do with white people or Indians or uh, uh, this is about God, me, and her enemy. And her. It's us. If you notice, he does not lecture anyone as to what to do. He does not talk about her profession or her skin color. He speaks of his struggle with what the reality is and tell her, this is my experience with God. And I can tell you, if you go to God, you will experience the same thing. <laughs> Look at the little amen you give me. I think I'm going to... I hate you. You know... We were hard on the sermon. I, I, I spent hours working. And I know I could always listen. I could always go 
go back and, and pull from my uh, folder some sermons that I preached before. But maybe spend some time working in the sermon. No, a little amen you won't even say. <laughs> a sister who hurt me so much in the church. Me left the church and feeling that if God knows what is good, this sister should never see the sight of heaven. <laughs> and worse than the sister is in almost every meeting, the conference I had, always in, 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 in at the camp Victory and when I pass by, I say, hello, Pastor Castell. <laughs> you know she's doing her thing, and every time, and then every time I see her, my heart begins to <laughs> Because every, you know when someone hurts you and you hurt and you can feel it, your blood pressure just rises and, and stuff like that. Even though I read this thing when it says that, you know, when, you, when someone hurts you and you're still holding the grudge, but how do you forgive when the hurt is wrong? Brethren, please, it's, it's 25 minutes to two, but give me one second, let me tell you. There was, I went to do a week of prayer at a church in Brooklyn. A young lady said that she wants to talk to me. She came to the study, she told me, Pastor. I said, hi, she's holding a baby in her arm. I said, yours? She said, yes. This baby came as a result of a rape. There was a crusade being held at the church. The elder was giving me Bible study. He raped me. I became pregnant. Shh. 
real story. Uh, I became pregnant with the child. And she was so lost, she joined the church. The elder still serving. Because he's a political icon in the church. You know them guys? Yeah, man. They own the church. So he's a political icon. The girl, not knowing what to do, she's drawn to that same church. You would think that if it was you, you'd go to another church. Or thing. He says that this, her issue was every time she holds the child, she wants to strangle the child. How do you then ask her to forgive him? And this is exactly what God asked. There are some of you, you've been dressing up, looking all fine. You've been coming to church regularly. But you're carrying some stuff they did way back home. I cannot really give you all the tools that you need or share with you my own personal struggle. But what I can tell you, you need to talk to God about how you feel. I'm not prescribing you to just ask God to forgive you and help you to let go of the person. But you need to talk about your feeling, your emotion. It is our emotion that's keeping us from having a strong, healthy relationship with Christ. Most of us have been having this fake relationship for too long. If you cannot forgive, Jesus said, I want to have no part with you. If that is the case, I wonder how many will be left in the church this morning. Because we have a real issue with forgiveness, especially repeat offenders. How many times should I forgive? As long as necessary. But forgiveness is a process. Most of us will experience forgiveness and we will die. We will never quite achieve it. But when we start the conversation with Christ, we are here. And then as we journey in the process, we will at times have loathe when we remember everything. And it's just like as if it happened yesterday. But because we keep talking with Christ, we never back where we were. We experience up and down in forgiveness. We never reach the ceiling, but we never where we were. Forgive as I forgive. It's a goal. You may never reach it, but you're always aiming for it. It is not always about you. So when you look at the death of this young man, unarmed, black, unjustly taken down, please don't forget, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, even death. And last of the tools I will share with you, don't forget, death is not the worst thing that can happen. Let's do it. Let's do it, my girl. Let's do it. We can do it. We can make it to heaven. I'm going to ask you to stand as I pray this prayer, a prayer of faith. Father, take Mount Vernon. Elder Williams and the rest of the elders and my ACS directors who are working with me, so faithfully, those in the IT department, the praise team, oh God, help us to deal with these emotions that are taking control of our spiritual lives. And please, Lord, please, finally today, we surrender all. Take over. Help us as we journey to forgiveness. Whatever the issues are, however difficult it is, 
help us in the journey. Some will move faster than others. Some will experience setbacks, and, but some will grow even faster than Bryant. But in our journey, we want to be like you in love and faith and in forgiveness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Is God great? Put your hands together. Give it to God.